comfort of a white, well, white suburb, it was easy to believe that everyone was prosperous and shared the same values as you and your neighbors. But this wasn't the case. Michael Harrington published a book in 1962 called The Other America that documented the continuing poverty in many uh, uh, segments of American society. In 1960, 30 million Americans, or 20% of the population, was living under the po uh, poverty line. Millions more were just above that line. Most poor went in and out of poverty, meaning they, they might get a job for a little while, be able to pull themselves out of poverty, and then lose that job and fall right back in. 20% of poor were constantly poor. Half of elderly Americans, many African Americans and Hispanics, uh, lived in poverty. The poorest group in the country, though, were Native Americans. The rising tide of the 1950s simply didn't lift all boats. Harrington called these groups resistant to hope, and there you see the uh, this graph starts in 60, but you can see how much higher poverty was uh, heading into the 60s than it will be at the end of the 60s. Farmers lived a marginal existence. In 1948, farmers got 8.9% of the national income, but by 1956, just eight years later, that number's been cut more in half to 4.1%. One reason was there were fewer farmers. In 1956 alone, 10% of rural Americans moved into the cities. Because of, this, uh, of the abundance of the 50s, as national incomes rose, uh, agri prices uh, rose 50%. Agricultural prices dropped 33%. So even if you're growing the same amount as a farmer, you're making less. And the mechanization of cotton picking and the introduction of synthetic fibers made it a bad time for African American sharecroppers in the South, who of course traditionally uh, uh, worked on cotton uh, uh, farms. Between 1930 and 1960, we saw two thirds of cotton acreage disappear. And migrant workers, Hispanics and Asians primarily, were hit hard in the American Southwest. And Appalachia reduced demand for coal uh, because one reason nuclear power plants, another reason oil, made poverty and starvation a way of life. White flight would then set in and create minority ghettos. If you could afford to get out of the cities during the 50s and into the 60s, you probably did. And the people who couldn't afford to get out of the cities tended to be minorities. This coincided with a black migration leaving their sharecropping lives because cotton was uh, simply disappearing as an American crop and moving into the cities. So the whites are heading out to the suburbs and minorities are heading in. Between 1940 and 1960, three million African Americans moved from the south to northern cities. Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, and, and New York all developed large uh, black neighborhoods. This will combine with white flight to cause the percentage of African Americans living in cities to skyrocket. And so now if you go into the downtowns, uh, you're going to see overwhelmingly, in the north even, uh, African Americans living there. Between 1940 and 1960, a million Puerto Ricans moved to the cities, primarily to New York. Um, by the way, this is what West Side Story is about, is these Puerto Ricans coming into New York City and, of course, having a hard time adjusting and a white kid and a or Italian kid, and a, and a Puerto Rican kid, uh, kid falling in love, and so on and so forth. Mexicans begin flooding into the Southwest. When the economy is doing well, there's tremendous incentive for Mexicans to cross the border and come into the U.S. San Antonio, Houston, San Diego, and Los Angeles um, all have a, a, a mushrooming uh, Hispanic American populations. Uh, by 1960, Los Angeles is half Hispanic. Minorities came to the cities as industries left uh, for, the, for the rural areas, ironically, as, as minorities were heading into the cities trying to find uh, industrial jobs. The industrial jobs are actually leaving the cities. They're heading into smaller communities, uh, uh, are heading overseas, um, as we know. Automation further reduces uh, uh, industrial jobs um, as we are more and more having machines do the work and people do less work. Racial discrimination in education, housing, and jobs would cement minorities in poverty. You, you can't go to the good school. You're not allowed to live in the suburbs. They ban minorities from living there. And some jobs are simply off limits for minorities. So even if you, if you, if you worked hard, you did everything right, you were bright, capable, untalented, you didn't have the opportunity uh, to be successful.